Hello, and welcome back to Skep's Unnamed Deck Showcase. Given the continued relevance of this deck post-nerf on the most recent ban list, because I don't count the Trickstar Reincarnation collateral damage as a real ban list, I thought I'd take a moment to show off what I believe a good candidate for a Salamand great deck in the current environment might look like. I've already told you about the archetype's history last time, so in the interest of not keeping you folks waiting, Let's hop right into the card by card for a version of the deck that, due to my particular ratios of Salaman Great Falco, I'm taking a page out of DZ's book and calling Chicken Salad. So here we are with the deck, and we're going to start from the top with our skill because it has a particular application with our extra deck, which I'll explain when we get to it. Firstly, Rise from the Valley of Haze is Soul Burner's level 1 skill, and it puts a Salaman Great Heat Leo in our extra deck at the very beginning of the duel. Additionally, like Destiny Draw, it has an effect that can be activated when our life points are 2,000 or below. Select one Salaman Great Link monster you control, add one monster with the same name as that monster to your extra deck, then play a Salaman Great Sanctuary to your field from outside of your deck. This skill can only be used once per duel. What this allows us to do is play two copies of Heat Leo effectively. If we make it to 2,000 life points and we summon Heat Leo, we can add the second one to our extra deck, which means we can play zero, which frees up extra deck space for utility rank fours like the new Giant Hand. Speaking about the monsters, spells, and traps, I'm going to go over the Salaman Great cards uh, first, all of them at once, and then we'll go over our staples because I have something important to talk about when we make it to them. You'll notice we're not playing 20 cards, but rather 22, and that sort of factors in to the staples I was speaking about earlier. Firstly, the one copy of Salaman Great Gazelle we are afforded, newly limited, meaning we cannot play this in Roar anymore. Uh, like last time, I said the strongest thing you could be doing is Looping Gazelle, and that is still true here. Uh, the difference is now we're just going to be relying on drawing busted back row instead of searching it, making it functionally exactly the same as every other good dueling deck, where you just want to draw your blowout trap cards going first. Uh, secondly, we're on the one copy of Jack Jaguar. Uh, I feel like uh, you don't really need to play uh, duplicates of your graveyard utility monsters, because people are going to be sniping your gazelle anyway, So, and you can't play multiple gazelles, so you don't need to play multiples of your graveyard effects because they're going to save their crows for gazelle. Um... I have won many games in which my Jack Jaguar has been banished, so having two has not yet come up, but if you're really scared of it, uh, you can definitely go up on them. Uh, I am playing three copies of Salaman Great Fowl because I said last time I'm TCG brained, and now that we no longer have Roar, that's even more so the case. I want to be making uh, Sunlight Wolf plus rank four as often as possible, and Fowl allows us to do that. Uh, sending uh, Jack Jaguar off of Gazelle when you open Foul, at least ends you on Bailinx with a Bailinx and Grave for protection and Abyss Dweller plus Giant or Giant Hand, uh, which uh, I did make against uh, a BA game and uh, it won the game for me. So I definitely think there are situations in which holding your Sunlight Wolf for later turns does pan out. And at the very, very least, Gazelle uh, plus Foul is rank four plus protected Bailinx uh, with both... Uh, Jack Jaguar and Foul for follow-up. If you detach your Foul on your opponent's turn, you will activate its effect when sent to the graveyard to set a Salaman Great Speller Trap. So if you had to get uh, Gazelle or Foul into your hand with Circle, you can detach this uh, on your opponent's turn, set it back, and have that for guaranteed follow-up. Uh, Salaman Great Foxy is our only real normal summon. Obviously, you can normal summon any of these cards, but this is our only dedicated normal summon. Excavate the three cards off the top of your deck. Add one excavated Salaman Great Monster from our deck to our hand. It's not even monster. It's any card. Uh, it digs you for circle. It, in the worst case scenario, digs you to sanctuary, although you obviously don't want to be searching sanctuary off this because uh, your bailings has it to your hand. Uh, you can add Foul to your hand to secure games. Foul, of course, is the Kagato Kage of the deck. Special summon it from your hand if a Salaman Great Monster is summoned to your field. Additionally, uh, it has an effect to discard any card to target a set card your opponent controls. That set card cannot be activated for the remainder of the turn. Uh, so this can force out back row if you need your Gazelle effect to go through. Last copy is Salaman Great Mirror. Uh, this card is exclusively for follow-up with Circle. You activate Circle going... Uh, first, on your opponent's turn, add Mirror to your hand, summon it to your Sunlight Wolf zone, add Gazelle back to your hand. In certain scenarios, I uh, this is really only for worst-case scenarios, but it really pulls you back into the game, so I don't think you can cut it. It is very strong. Um, it also can special summon it from your hand by discarding cards, so that's another way to put Foul or Jack Jaguar into the graveyard. Not ideal, but it is, uh, it is what it is, and if you draw it, you can shuffle it back off Jack Jaguar, uh, when you uh, activate circle again, you can add it to your hand and then summon it. So that's a, a, 
another uh, utility there. This is like the best main deck monster to be shuffling back, other than Foul, because you want you want Foxy, Falco, and Gazelle in the grave because these two summon themselves in addition to Jack Jaguar, and you want to be adding Gazelle off of your Sunlight Wolf. So these two are the best to shuffle back. This one being the best because it has utility on your opponent's turn with Circle, which we are playing three copies of. Uh, this is a quick play spell that adds a Salamander Great monster from your deck to your hand or target a Salamander Great Link monster you control that was linked to someone using a monster with a name. Unaffected by monster effects this turn except its own. This is a sort of weird uh, card. The only time you would ever use that, I would think, is in response to a giant hand negating your Sunlight Wolf because even if you were to, to negate a something like Malevolent Sin targeting your... Uh, uh, wolf and making it unaffected, it can still hit over your wolf unless you're going to protect it with Baylinks. So I've just never been in a situation in which the last part of that effect comes up. One copy of Salman Great Sanctuary. I really hate uh, drawing this card, but I also really don't want to play more cards to stop me from getting uh, to my staples. So uh, it is what it is. We're playing one copy of it because we want to search it off Baylinks and we do not want to draw it. I'm not going up on cards like last time because I really, really, really want to draw my staples. We don't have the reliability of an archetypal counter trap, so we really are uh, relying on the ability to draw any number of uh, our going first. Uh, blowouts being uh, three copies of Warning Point and two Needle Sealing. I'll explain them a little bit later. Uh, the last consistency card we're playing is Cyanet Mining. Cyanet Mining, really good with uh, any of these. I really like searching Jack Jaguar off of uh, Circle and then discarding it for uh, Gazelle. That is uh, my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. Uh, but those are the uh, archetypal cards and consistency tools. The last on our list is our staples. The first one I'll speak about uh, being the most powerful one, in my opinion, three warning point. This card is powerful uh, because uh, it stops really any combo deck in its tracks uh, because most combo decks rely on a spell speed one ignition effect to continue. I'm thinking of cards like BA needing Dante to mill more names. Additionally, they need Dante to rank up into Beatrice. This stops both of those things. This stops Mech Knights from becoming Morningstar. Uh, very powerful. Secondly, we're on a 2-2 split of Needle Sealing because I think it's really funny to resolve with Bailings, but unless I'm mistaken, this has never come up. Uh, uh, in that whenever I've had Bailings in the graveyard to resolve Needle Sealing, my opponent has had DD Crow, but that brings up an additional utility of Needle Sealing. It prevents your opponent from, from uh, DD Crowing your uh, extenders like Jaguar, Foxy, and Falco because they really want to blow up your board. And if you played your turn right, you'll have Gazelle in your hand, meaning even if they DD Crow your Bailings, when you pop your field, you're going to be summoning Gazelle, which mean you're, means you're going to be getting additional bodies on the field. Your opponent will not, and you'll be uh, sending more cards to the graveyard that you can possibly trigger. For example, uh, you can send Falco to the graveyard to reset uh, Circle if it's not already there. And then on your following turn, you'll have Roar, uh, Circle for follow-up to get you whatever starter you need or extender if Gazelle stays on the board. Very powerful. I don't necessarily think I would cut Needle Sealing, uh, but you definitely could. We're on a two-split of DD Crow because I figured I wanted to get this episode out fast. I wasn't going to play any rematches on ladder for the most part, but rather I was going to have games against friends who I knew had meta decks because the thesis of this episode is how well does this deck hold up post-nerf versus the new metagame. And in that vein, I knew DD Crow was good against the metagame, meta so I've added two copies of it here. I mentioned we're on a 2-2 split because another card that's now uh, semi-limited, meaning you can only play two, is Debug. And you can really take any permutations of these two staples to stay at 20 uh, cards. Additionally, if you want to be really budget and you're only concerned with ladder, th this main deck is 20 cards and basically uh, m is all in one box. I think all the main deck cards are either level up rewards or in the uh, initial Vrains box that I forget the name of. Uh, so this is definitely what I would also play if I was in tournament because this maximizes consistency. And because you have a side deck, you can play your two Needle Ceiling and two Crow in the side deck for any relevant matchups that they would otherwise be dead against. Uh, additionally, if you're playing this in tournament, I would heavily recommend either side decking Steel Swarm Roach and taking out uh, Giant Hand for from the main deck to main deck Roach or side deck Roach and then uh, swap Giant Hand for Roach as needed or swapping Dweller for Roach as needed because uh, Dweller is sort of dead versus Mech Knights. Roach is sort of dead versus Salaman Great. So I would, I would say this is sort of the best deck um, main deck for tournament because it keeps uh, your main and extra as consistent as possible for possible threats. 
Uh, and uh, for ladder, I decided I would play more staples because you're up against a wider variety of stuff. And I do think 22 cards is fine because, again, so many searchable copies of Gazelle. We have five out of 20 staples we want to draw in the back row. And, of course, it's slightly less likely for us to draw that goddamn field spell, although I still draw it all the time. With the main deck completed, let's speak about our extra deck. It is mostly the same as last time, although we've made one substitution, as I'll explain. Later, we're now only playing two copies of Bailings and two Sunlight Wolf. We've said goodbye to Heat Leo. We're only playing the one from the skill, and ideally, uh, that's all we'll need. Although, if we play a little creatively, again, we can add the second one to our extra deck once we get below 2,000 life points. Uh, there are very... Uh, Mini combos in which you'll go through two Bay Links, either to end on a Bay Links in a rank four with a Bay Links in grave, or to put a second Bay Links in grave for you to shuffle back off Sunlight, uh, off uh, Jack Jaguar to leave your relevant extenders in the graveyard. Mandatory to play at least two. Same with Sunlight Wolf. The whole reason to play the deck is resetting Gazelle to your hand and uh, adding Salmon Great Circle to your hand. You need two of them to do the latter. Uh, mandatory to play at least two. We're playing Security Dragon. This card is goaded with the sauce. I cannot recommend this card enough for Salaman Great. It is probably stronger in this deck than any other deck because you can make it uh, second. You can make your Bailings first and then uh, uh, Security Dragon, whereas in basically any other deck that I've played, you've had to make Security Dragon first and then have a monster that points up to it. A very, very strong combo with this deck. Additionally, you can link the Bailings and Security Dragon off for Ningirsu. Uh, Primo removal in this deck, we struggle a lot with non-targeting removal. This is our out to that. Additionally, it helps us play through disruption. If our security dragon gets negated, we link it off for Ningirsu, and that is our removal spell. If it doesn't get negated, we now have two removal spells. Uh, very strong. I, I'm, I'm really sold on these uh, six cards. I wouldn't change them for anything. One copy of Dweller because I'm afraid of Salaman Great, B.A. and P.K. And one Giant Hand because it is the best uh, rank four to make generically going first blind because you can't be sure if Dweller hits what you're playing against. And you definitely can't be sure Ro Roach hits what you're playing against. Uh, additionally, there was a game against Salaman Great that I lost to the time limit, so I'm not going to include it, in which I almost got punished for making this going first, but I would have pulled it out. I had lethal on field, but alas, I'm uh, big dumb and could not make my plays fast enough. Um, the only thing I would change is, uh, Giant Hand for Roach, if you're just, like, refuse to believe you'll ever fight against a rogue matchup on, um, ladder, in which case I, uh, respect that, but I, I don't think you'll, uh, I don't think it'll go well for you. Uh, that's the list. Uh, I'm really satisfied with it. It felt really strong when I was playing it and testing. I ended up farming a few replays on ladder, but most of them were against meta decks. And this deck still felt really strong, although now you need to actually draw your good cards, which uh, kind of feels bad. One of the cool things about this deck was that you could just combo to end on what you needed to rather than need to draw it. But alas, uh, we can't have nice things, I guess. Uh, let's check out some replays. First game of the set uh, here is going to be against a Yami Yugi on ladder because it showcases what you can do with just Gazelle. We've just got Gazelle and we got Cyanet Mining, so we're going to show you how we make that work. I make this uh, play a little interestingly, so that's why I wanted to show it off. It's not a standard line of play, but it is a way to get uh, Gazelle back into your hand in a worst-case scenario. We're going to normal summon Gazelle, send Falco to the graveyard. Falco will let us uh, return Gazelle to our hand, and since each effect is once per turn individually, when we send it to the graveyard, we can activate Gazelle in our hand. We will not send it to the graveyard with its effect, but that's totally fine. What we want to do is add Sanctuary to our hand, so we can activate Cyanet Mining, sending the Sanctuary to the graveyard to add Foul. We're going to Link Summon our good friend Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. That'll trigger Foul from our hand, summon itself to the Sunlight Wolf zone, adding Gazelle back to our hand, and we're going to hard reincarnate Sunlight Wolf so we can activate its effect and add the Sanctuary back to our hand, set warning point, and pass uh, along with the Needle Sealing. Turns out none of that matters, so the opponent's going to activate Aroma Garden, two Aroma Gardenings, set a card, and pass. Oof! So we play this uh, game a little interestingly. Um, we're going to activate uh, Falco, activate Foxy, sending Gazelle to reading uh, animated at its link point, adding Gazelle back to our hand. We're going to link off for Heat Leo so we can put one of those uh, cards back in the deck there. 
then we're going to uh, attack over it and attack directly, uh, not attacking with Heat Leo because we want to avoid D draw. It pays off. They draw dead. We activate Circle. We drew for turn to add Jack Jaguar to our hand. It's all over from here. We're going to activate Foxy, discard Jack Jaguar for Foxy, blow up their continuous spell, and they give up. Game number two going to be a real nail biter up against a Tetsu Trudge on Infernoids. Luckily, we win, win the die roll and are able to go first. We're going to activate Rise from the Valley of Haze and draw our opening hand. Two DD Crows and two uh, Salad Names, effectively. Uh, because we drew a Circle and Sign Up Mining, we're going to search Jaguar off Circle, pitch it for Gazelle. Gazelle will activate. We're going to send, I believe, Falco to the Graveyard. Yep. Activate Falco to set the uh, Quick Play spell. We're going to link off. Uh, one copy of Bay Links, add a field spell to our hand, activate that field spell, activate Jack Jaguar, send that foul back into our deck so we can send it again off Gazelle if need be, uh, make Sunlight Wolf and pass. This is not great, but we do have Circle, which we're shotgunning. This is showing off why we're playing Mirror, adding it to our hand, activating it, summoning at the link point, and now Gazelle is safely back in our hand for next turn. They're going to normal summon Decatron, send the level 10, that represents a monster negate. Going to activate Pot of Duality, excavating Void Feast. Must be nice, <clears throat> but hey, that's why they play Duality. Got to make it to Feast after all. Setting a card, we know that's Feast for sure. We're going to reincarnate the Sunlight Wolf right away so we can activate the Jack Jaguar in our graveyard to shuffle back the... Uh, Sunlight Wolf, that's totally fine. Our Jack Jaguar gets banished, but what we really care about is that we no longer have to worry about that monster effect negation for when we add uh, the circle back to our hand. Um, a little bit of a missed opportunity here. Uh, they don't get to uh, copy the effect of uh, an Infernoid monster before we uh, activate um, our Sunlight Wolf, so we get to use its effect. We're going to use Foxy because we're trying to bait out that monster negate. We add a circle to our hand. That's going to be totally fine. Switch it to attack position. And we're just trying to get uh, that Decatron off the field so we don't have to deal with another monster effect negate. We really want our Gazelle online. They're going to normal summon Decatron. Damn, drawing it again. Uh, we're going to uh, effect negate that. We're going to DD Crow, targeting both their copies of, I believe this far card's name is uh, Deviati. That's the one. I was going to say Petrela, uh, but I think that's what this card's called. So they're going to target our set circle. We're going to uh, add Foul, because if any of these cards get destroyed, uh, we're going to uh, summon Gazelle and then Foul. All right, we've lost our... Um, whatever the hell it's called, Sanctuary, but that's totally fine. We're going to just clean up the match here. Going to make our second Bailings here. That's going to activate Gazelle. Gazelle's going to activate to send Falco. Falco's going to activate uh, to return Foxy. Yeah, we were baiting out the Banishment. All we care about is that we get to Normal Summon Foxy again. And there's a second Falco, uh, so we can discard that off of Cyanet Mining if need be. We're going to activate the uh, effect of Falco after we make, or Foul after we make a Sunlight Wolf. Sunlight Wolf's going to uh, activate to return uh, Gazelle back to our hand. We're going to make Security Dragon. Security Dragon is going to activate to return that monster to the hand. They're going to quick effect tribute it. I don't exactly know why they did that. Probably because they knew we had lethal on board anyway. And that also would have killed them through life point boost alpha. Because even if they had 2200 life points, we had 2900 damage on the field. Securing us the game in either case. All right, the next two games are going to be against Pillar of the Community, Light of My Life, Fire of My Loins, Moderator of My Channel, Swamp Dharma on Burning Abyss. I really wanted to showcase a PK game, but uh, the person I know who plays PK did not respond to my messages, so we're just going to pretend uh, one of these games is against PK. Uh, but there are going to be two BA games just to show how you can do a couple different things against them depending on your opening hand. We're going to make the Bay Links and Rank 4 uh, pass this uh, game. It's a little rough because we do have to shuffle back Gazelle, but I made the decision that it was worthwhile for me to have a abyss dweller on my side of the field with two warning points uh because i i'm just trying to to kill uh, my ba opponent as fast as possible because with really sticky decks like this um you really got to isolate which one of you is the beat down and in this case that's definitely our opponent so we got to kill them before they can kill us uh we're going to make bay links off of bay links that protects itself uh with the uh additional copy in the graveyard we're going to make abyss dweller and set our two warning point they're going to activate Rubik, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. We're just going to shotgun Dweller because we want 
uh, our what's his face in the graveyard, Jack Jaguar. They're going to make Dante travel to the Burning Abyss. That's good news for me because we get two material off their field and they can't make Beatrice. We've got everything we need. We're going to put that uh, Bailings back in the extra deck so we can make uh, Jack Jaguar into Sunlight Wolf, get Gazelle out of our hand, drew it in for turn, must be nice. They're going to break through skill our Gazelle, and now that the shields are down, we can uh, activate Abyss Dweller before linking it off for Security Dragon. Security Dragon is going to uh, add, um, with Sunlight Wolf, is going to add Gazelle back. We're going to reincarnate the Sunlight Wolf, and then we're going to add Circle back to our hand, because we can't normal summon Gazelle this turn. We're going to add Circle, grab the Falco, because this is lethal, and if for some reason it's not, uh, Falco has the most utility if our opponent removes it from the field if they didn't die. But of course, that doesn't matter because they are dead. Second match up against Swamp here on Burning Abyss. We're going to win the coin toss. Skep, why don't you show a game in which you lose the coin toss against BA? Because I cannot for the life of me beat Beatrice Pass with this deck. And if they set fucking Breakthrough Skill or draw Didi Crow, it's just double over. So we're going to normal summon Foxy for no effect. Uh, I This is not playing around Didi Crow. Uh, luckily, they, I guess they just held it or didn't have it. I had a delay and I had no idea what it was uh, because there was a delay before I even put a card in my graveyard. But we're going to discard... Um, Jack Jaguar to make a second Bay Lynx. Now we have two engraved, meaning we can shuffle one back off of Jaguar to add the Foxy back for our normal summon next turn. And we have Needle Ceiling and Protection. So if our opponent gets two monsters on the field, we can blow them up. Just fucking kidding. They Mystical Space Typhoon our Needle Ceiling. And they can just go off to the races. They're going to normal summon... Uh, a very funny thing here, they normal summon Crane Crane, which destroys the BA, but then allows us to, allows them rather to use the on summon effect to revive the BA. That's pretty funny. So that's how they get to make Dante. They're going to send three cards, discard another, make Beatrice Lady of the Eternal. Uh, Didi Crow, our Bay Lynx, that's pretty good. So they did have Crow. I don't know why they didn't use it going first. Maybe they drew it for turn and I'm just insane on what the, uh, the delay was. We draw a sign at mining. Must be nice. We get to get Falco out of our hair, which is giving us all the tools we need to play through their Beatrice. Uh, basically, all I'm worried about is um, playing through a Farfa banishing my uh, security dragon before I can get the effect off, but getting Falco foul into our hand, rather, is just going to be all uh, she wrote. That is going to ensure that we can definitely... Uh, get it off. They're going to activate Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, detaching Dante as cost, sending some shit. What did they send? Oh my god, we're way all the way up here. Uh, we're going to send Barbar. Barbar is going to activate to uh, banish three cards. They're going to activate uh, another uh, Burning Abyss, Burning Abyss effects to add a monster from the graveyard to your hand and special summon a monster from their hand. That's totally fine because what we have here is the ability to make Abyss Dweller. Activate Abyss Dweller, make our Ningirsu, making his triumphant return from the last time we played this deck, I think. We're going to send our field spell and attack for lethal points of damage, and our opponent surrenders. Home stretch fuckers, last game of the set here, going to be a mirror match up against Doc on Salman Great. Of course, we lose the die roll, so let's see if going first is all that matters in this mirror match. If you're wondering where Mech Knights are, I genuinely tried asking around every server that I was in, and uh, no one uh, no one had Mech Knights. So if you'd like to maybe participate in these uh, replay farmings in the future, uh, please do consider uh, following me on Twitch, because I do uh, replay farming live. Let's uh, recap on what has happened so far. They're going to activate Cyanet Mining, detaching uh, Foxy as cost to add Gazelle to their hand, triggering Gazelle's effect to summon itself, activating Gazelle's effect on summon, chaining Falco as chain link 2. Uh, let's see what's uh, going on now. They're going to summon Foul... Send Falco, activate Circle, adding Mir. Since they didn't use their normal summon, I think they should have added Jack Jaguar, but they told me in DMs they were just trying to be cute. And, I mean, look at them. You can definitely tell. What a little cutie sitting across the table from me right now. They're going to make Bay Lynx here, of course. That's going to search them the field spell. Activate Sanctuary, of course. Going to add uh, activate Falco in the graveyard to put Mir back in hand. Normal summon that Mir. Make Sunlight Wolf and reincarnate that Sunlight Wolf 
to add circle back to their hand. This is rank four plus circle plus gazelle in hand. Very, very strong. This is about as good as it gets for post nerf Salamangrate. Let's see if we can play through it. What are we going to draw for turn? Literally the best draw in our deck. We're going to activate Cyanet Mining. Add that uh, foul to our hand. That was a massive throw. I forgot we can't use our graveyard effects. So we're going to... Uh, I should have normal summoned that Foxy and link it off. But alas, we're going to be rewarded here. I'm, I'm sure. I just believe in myself. So we're going to activate uh, Balinx's effect on summon to add that Sanctuary to our hand. We're going to link off for Ye old Sunlight Wolf. Going to activate Sanctuary here. Sanctuary going to reincarnate Sunlight Wolf. Adding the circle to our hand. We have not performed our normal summon yet. So it ended up being okay that we sent that fox to the graveyard because normal summon Jaguar will activate our uh, Sunlight Wolf and contest the uh, Sunlight Wolf of our opponent. Uh, meaning our uh, opponent no longer has Bailing in our uh, graveyard. We do. Tele hard telegraphing the needle ceiling, but we'll see if they can play through it here. All that matters is that the shields are down for next turn, and they do not have Dweller. They're going to reanimate that uh, Foxy. That's totally fine with me. They're going to add Foul back to their hand. Going to make ye old Salamangrate Heatleo. We can really uh, warning port them for their entire life savings here, uh, just having it clog the extra monster zone. They're going to activate Circle here, grabbing themselves a second Foxy, unless they shuffle the Foxy back. I'm not paying attention, are you? They're going to activate Falco just to get that Heat Leo out of the extra monster zone. Um, they're going to make a second Bailinx. That wasn't a misplay. They, they did say they just wanted it out of their zone. They're going to uh, bring Bailinx out of their hand, send a Jack Jaguar. Jack Jaguar is going to activate, putting back that second Sunlight Wolf. We're going to Needle Ceiling. They're going to DD Crow. That's totally fine. They've already used their Gazelle effect. They can't extend through this. We summon Gazelle from our hand. Send a Falco for follow-up next turn, meaning we'll be able to make Sunlight Wolf after setting a Circle on our turn. And we're just so far ahead of the game at this point that our opponent concedes and we take the game. So we're back with the deck, and somehow I managed to maintain an even higher win rate with this build of the deck than when I tested the full-powered version. I only lost to Swamp when they went second on BA and to the time limit on Ladder when I already had Lethal on field, so we're not going to count that. In my estimation, the Banlist was able to prevent consistent access to this deck's highest ceiling plays and restrict the number of good generic traps we can play, as we can no longer play Compulse and Crackdown, but ultimately the deck still feels more or less the same in terms of power level, as Warning Point is still unrestricted, and while it is no Crackdown, Needle Ceiling does a decent enough impression of a good card when Bailings is in the graveyard at least. Not having access to Roar does suck, but Roar on its own was never winning your games. It was the ability to make Sunlight Wolf with Bailings and Grave, backed up by multiple trap cards and Gazelle in hand. That's a play you can still do now. Sunlight Wolf set to back row hoses so much of the game, and even when we're forced to run the fifth best trap cards, we can still take a massive lead with well-timed warning point activations and needle ceiling blowouts. Overall, the deck feels slightly less consistent, but not in that it doesn't pull off the same combo as reliably as before, but in the fact that now we can't set Roar from our graveyard anymore, and we can't send Roar directly from our deck to the graveyard, we now rely much more heavily on hard drawing our blowout traps, making the deck feel overall more sacky. This is again why I'm playing Needle Ceiling over Debug in this deck, because I'd rather draw two trap cards, or rather, I'd rather at least draw one powerful trap card than another additional copy of Gazelle. I feel like seven is enough. So that's that. I apologize if any of this episode felt rushed, but I recorded it all in one day so I could have it uploaded before the new box launches on New Year's Day, and I also wanted to save the latter half of this week for making my holiday deck showcase. Holiday? Holiday? Whatever it's called. If you'd like to see the decks I make on this show live on stream, you can check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash skeptical snivy. I'll be streaming the holiday deck later, and spoilers, I'll also be doing harpies, given that I want to showcase the deck before the new box drops, and I'll do another deck after, uh, Egotist comes off because I have two different builds of Harpy Ladies that are very different from each other that I think would be fun to show off. And uh, given that uh, it's relevant and it'll not need me to go into a new box, I want to make as much content with the decks I have that are relevant as possible. All in all, um, this was a fun uh, video to record. I'm very impressed by Salaman Great Post Nerf. Uh, who cares? It's late at night. I gotta edit this now. I love y'all. Thank you for watching. Maybe leave a like and comment if you so choose. Big kisses. Bye-bye.